I saw some leaders making their teams without asking them work more and work because of the leader. They love the leader. Why wouldn't you be one of those leaders? Mustafa Zaglul, the business unit head of Unilever. He's led with distinction, propelling revenue to $600 million. With over two decades of expertise, he's navigated complex markets and driven sustainable growth for gigantic multinational companies across 22 categories in 22 countries. The highest mental issue that employees face in the corporates. The typical answer would be workload, pressure, targets, micromanagement. Yeah, those are right. But the real issue from my point of view is not facing conflicts, not confronting, not having those crucial discussions. I faced several restructures in my life. Some of them, by the way, I survived. Some of them, I didn't survive. Some of them, I was in the position that I asked people to leave. Some of them, I was asked to continue or leave or change a role. And this role might have been something good for me, matching with my aspiration, and sometimes no. But for employees, you need to embrace change. So change is the only constant in life now. My purpose in life, which I defined, I think, seven, eight years ago, is to make a difference in people's life every day. My father passed away a couple of years ago and I was living abroad. I was not with him. I felt that I didn't spend the right time, the proper time with him. Now I missed him. So being passionate about work, loving work is something very good. But being workaholic is dangerous and you don't realize it except when you miss some things. Mustafa, are you ready to unleash? I am ready to unleash. What's the percentage? Uh, 232. This is with the bonus, huh? <laughs> <laughs> A pleasure having you, Mustafa, here. Same here. Um, Mustafa, when I look at your experience, I've seen that you have like moved in many multinational companies and you climbed the ladder very fast. I want to understand what is that thing that you develop in your leadership to get into where you are today? I think the key word here is agility. Agility. So uh, I was not the same Mustafa or the same Zago, as people knew me, <laughs> uh, where I started. So I remember when I used to play sports, I was a professional soccer player. When I used to play sports, I was very easily teased to be angry. I worked on that and currently I'm like a very cool, calm person. I remember my pace was in sometimes very fast to the extent that sometimes uh, it's a bit immature. Currently with the experience, with agility, you maneuver and you change and you get developed. So I think agility is a key word. Agility is, by the way, one of the values of a lot of companies now. <laughs> so uh, people realize that uh, the word agility, you also hear a lot of uh, topics about change management mm -hmm. nowadays, uh, especially after COVID. So uh, I, I think this is the key word. This is the magical word, agility, how to be flexible, how to get developed, how to avoid being rigid and uh, saying that uh, this is me, this is how it works. Mm -hmm my way or the highway. It doesn't work like that. So throughout your experience in big multinational companies, I'm so curious to understand how did you manage the spirit of the team and how do you develop your team and how to develop their leadership skills to reach to whatever they want? That's a very nice question. So uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, engagement. So uh, Regardless of leading a sales team or another functional team, regardless of your level, regardless of the company, whether it's a multinational or a local company, uh, people are human, right? So those leaders or those people on the ground, they are human beings. So uh, what you need to assure every day, every week, every month, even every hour, that those people are engaged. Because if you want a typical person to give you 
what you want from them, be it a target, be it uh, efforts, uh, time, whatever. Always remember that those people left their families, left their homes to come to work. And they spent more time with you or in the business more than the, what they spent with their kids and their families. And also remember that you impact them, okay, when they go back to their families. <laughs> Always put this in mind. So you might yeah. create a huge impact, mm -hmm. positive or negative, on their personal life. So the answer is engagement. So what I really assure, what people always know me uh, and talk about me in this part, in the business part, is the engagement part. So I love doing business with fun. Mm -hmm. I love doing business with engagement. And very simple things. Huh? So engagement could be, uh, for example, celebrating birthdays mm -hmm. of team members every month. Mm -hmm. Very simple thing, right? Engagement could be inviting them for a dinner or a lunch once a month or a breakfast, a group breakfast. Engagement could be hearing them or listening them. So we have a game, you know, the hot chair game. Mm -hmm. So every month we have someone on the hot chair and we talk about this person what did he do well uh, what he didn't do well what are the learnings so he speaks but before he speaks people give him his advice and i always start with myself <laughs> and this is like the the nasty part everyone speaks up but because they have this comfort that this is a safe zone they speak out so uh, so engaging eng engagement could be also business related so for example if you go with a team member doing on field coaching i'm talking about sales people here mm -hmm. that's engagement by the way mm -hmm. when you go to the trade listen to them hear their problems their challenges try to help them coach them not only mentor them so don't give them the solution just give them like the way they say, teach them how to fish. Don't give them the fish. So, mm -hmm. so this, is, this is also engagement. Mm -hmm. When you let every leader, every supervisor engage with his or her team, that's also engagement. So it's, it's not necessarily directly from you to the people, but you need just to create the environment of having people engaged. And there is a lot of companies that partner with uh, uh, engagement specialists so I, I don't want to do an advertising but you know like Gallup for example mm -hmm. is a very well-known company that some companies partner with uh, Hayes so there is a lot of companies that they do this annual survey to test and get the results and hear the voice of their employees and what's more important is how do you act on that one of the companies I worked for, uh, they they evaluate each leader and you can, to that extent, you can get promoted. This is one of the factors. If your engagement score is high, because this tells a lot about you and your team, and some people, their career gets impacted negatively if they are not willing to engage or create this safe environment and interactive environment with their team members. Uh, engagement is uh, is crucial. Do you think that engagement can is is it somehow connected to uh, the business results from your point of view? Hundred percent. So let me tell you one thing. Imagine two people, okay, having the same capabilities. One person is coming that he's 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 not engaged, he's not happy, but he's doing the job because he just wants the salary end of the month the check end of the month okay so he will give you the bare minimum he will work from nine to five or whatever the working hours he will go to the exact number of customers that you ask them so he, he will be doing it mechanical like ticking the box versus another person that will you know in, in, in our language we say he will eat the grass like he, he would just lick the floor to 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 go ma the maximum to do the best to get to extract the maximum potential out of what he's doing so you would find him working in although i'm not recommending that but he, you will find him by default without asking you working after hours 
coming early, uh, visiting more customers. Um, uh, sometimes they work in the week and preparing for the week. I don't recommend that, but I, I mean, this is like something by default. You will see people like, I saw some leaders making their teams without asking them work more and work because of the leader. Mm -hmm. They love the leader. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you be one of those leaders? Mm -hmm. So definitely it's something that you need to be proud of if the team is working for the company, but they're actually doing this because of you. And you know the famous word that people don't leave businesses because of the business, they leave businesses because of the leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, for, that's a very simple example. How do you empower people? So, let me tell you one thing. I just uh, heard a video for uh, Simon Sinek, okay, which uh, which is a person who a person I love. He was saying that uh, one of the workshops he was doing was with the U.S. Navy, okay, and uh, he just drew a quadrant with X and Y axis. One was performance and one was trustworthy. Okay. And he's saying that if this is the diagram, the low performer, low trustworthy, definitely is someone that no one wants. High performance, high trustworthy, someone that everyone seeks. But so th this is non-negotiable. But he was talking about the high performance, low trustworthy versus a medium to sometimes low performer with high trustworthy is more beneficial for the business than the high performer, low trustworthy. And he opened my mind to something. He said that in companies, we measure performance, right? right? With KPIs, but we never measure trustworthy. Mm -hmm. And I think the key point here is there is no assessment or evaluation officially done in companies to measure this skill or this competency mm -hmm. or this capability. So imagine someone, very, very high achiever every month, but he's, he's not trustworthy for the team, not trustworthy for the business, for the customers. So he's your representation for the company, right? Mm -hmm. Versus another one that is doing his or her best, medium performer, needs some coaching, some helping, some capability building, but very trustworthy. Who do you think is more sustainable for the business? Definitely the second one, right? But as per the company's KPIs and records, he's a medium performer, not a high performer. So back to the empowerment part, I think if you link this empowerment with trust, this is the new angle I'm proposing here. So, uh, yeah, and, and I loved it from uh, Simon. Yeah. It's lovely. How do you manage a conflict? Because, you know, in, in most of the companies, you cannot be a human at the end of the day. And uh, some of the functions, by default, it's been triggered because you, have, you will have, like, conflict. Uh, supply chain is different than sales. Sales has another things. The marketing, R&D, you have a lot of things, which is uh, at the end of the day, there will be a lot of conflicts in the business. How do you manage conflicts? So conflict management, or in other words, confrontation, is again, one of the capabilities or one of the skills needed for any employee regardless of your level. And again, I will always refer to the companies because I've worked in mega four or five companies. I saw different perspectives, different leaders. Uh, one of those companies has conflict management as one of the skills and competencies that you're evaluated as a leader on. Okay. And uh, I think this was like a, 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 an eye opener because some companies don't create the environment of facing conflicts or confronting conflicts. There was one of the courses 
in, the, in, in, in this company that I worked for that is called Crucial Conversation. So they teach you the how, the what, the when to confront a person when you have a conflict with him or her mm -hmm. to that extent. And you can't imagine the positive impact of such a skill to resolve those conflicts. Mm -hmm. Because one of the key barriers, so if you ask me, for example, uh, what would be the highest mental issue that employees face mm -hmm. in the corporates? Mm -hmm. The typical answer would be workload, <laughs> pressure, targets, micromanagement. Yeah, those are right. But the real issue from my point of view is mm -hmm. not facing conflicts, not confronting, not having those crucial discussions. Mm -hmm. So, but again, it's not like I come to you, I shout, <laughs> I hit you. It's not like that. It's an art. Mm -hmm. It's an art. And there is a lot of development programs or courses. One of them is this crucial conversation, conversation conflict management, confrontation, mm -hmm. Uh, confrontational feedback so a lot of names but it's all serving the same objective is how do we help you to talk with someone to confront when and what do you say mm -hmm. are the key elements of uh, this uh, talk why do you think that uh, confrontation is very hard why people they held back from confronting what's the main reason from your perspective the first thing that pops to my mind is the uh, personality. Some people, uh, some people are into, uh, are uh, introvert, okay? An introvert, by default, will shy away from having a potential conflict or having a crucial conversation with someone because this person in his or her mind will say like, I have already enough on the plate. Why would I create another enemy? But actually you're not. You're actually crossing this and you might be creating another collaborative relationship. Because it's like a snowball. If I have a conflict with you, Ahmed, in day one, it's not like in day 50. It keeps on growing and growing because we interact with each other every day. So... If you don't like me, or I don't like the way you do business, or we don't like each other's way of managing people, you will always have, even if it's only inside, a blaming mindset or a pinpointing mindset. And it will keep on escalating to the extent that it might reach a way where both of you will be burnt cards. Mm -hmm. So why do you reach that? Mm -hmm. So the first reason would be the personality. So some people don't want to go out of their comfort zone. They shy away from that. And it's a pity when you find a leader or a very senior position in a company that doesn't have the skill. Mm -hmm. It's really, really so negative mm -hmm. and impacts the environment in the business. Mm -hmm in whatever the corporate yeah. is. So, uh, yeah, this would be the main reason. If, from my experience also in corporation, I see great colleagues, they confront colleagues on the same level, okay? But when it comes, when their bosses, they are coming and telling them like uh, something that they don't like it, or they don't see that it will be worthy for the business itself, what they do, they're afraid from confrontation. However, in their personality, they confront. But at the end of the day, you know, in Arabic or in, in Egyptian, we need to eat bread at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so they think uh, if I just confront my, uh, my boss, maybe I'll have like some question marks on, you know, we're human. So how do you tackle these biases or overcome these biases from your perspective? So what you said has two angles, okay? So the first angle, which is in my control, which is me, okay, talking to my boss. Again, it is an art, like I said. So 
I had this before I faced, I'm a very confrontational person. Okay, so I don't fear conflicts. And sometimes it puts me in, or it had put me before in situations where I don't regret it because this is what I felt. But again, because it's art, because it's uh, it's something that is taught and got developed throughout the journey. So if you know how to uh, face this conflict or how to communicate it, what to say, when to say it, and just put the salt and pepper, the person in front of you, definitely if he's or uh, your boss, they have some ego, maybe. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, let's let's mm -hmm. face reality mm -hmm. but again he, he's a he's a human being right mm -hmm. so everyone has his or her sweet spot mm -hmm. you can always tackle it the right way mm -hmm. so i'm sure those bosses that people fear away from them talking mm -hmm. to them even in the day to day again they are they are human beings they are outside the work a father a friend mm -hmm. uh, a colleague even at work mm -hmm. they are also because you make friends at business right mm -hmm. So, again, the part in your control would be the art of conflict management. That's one part. But from what we talk today, I think the one message I want to give to leaders is please create the environment of confrontation. Make people comfortable to talk to you. Start with yourself. If you allow one person in a crowd, in a town hall, in a big meeting, to say or to talk their voice loudly, you will have huge positive impact on the business, on you as a leader, and on the rest of the team. It's amazing, Mustafa. Mustafa, with the surrounding that I see, I see a lot of companies now, regardless what's happening, but there is a wave of restructuring. It's happening a lot. And I see a lot of uh, my friends, they are great performers, amazing performers. And due to this uncertainty because of the restructure, you don't know what's happening, but due to that tight margin, due to the AI, you have a lot of uh, things. But when the wave, this wave comes, a lot of great performers, they have been taken in this wave. What is your perspective on from perspective of the companies, why they're doing this, and also how we as a human being right now to be prepared for these waves and act accordingly. So restructuring is a very uh, hot topic. Mm -hmm. And I know everyone fears from talking about it. I even had one of my posts recently <laughs> on this topic. You can see some people interacted, but you can see some people you felt it they want but they're afraid to to interact which is very normal mm. but because i'm again very confrontational so <laughs> so it's a good question you just need to think from the company's perspective okay just neglect yourself now from the equation mm. as an employee mm. why do, do companies do restructure usually in the past people used to hear less restructures in big multinationals okay usually like the, the the companies do it every five years six years maybe some companies 10 years but because the whole economical political macro factors changed so the companies started to realize that their profits are getting lesser their business models are getting impacted and what brought you here won't bring you there also the factor of digitization for example the factor of remote working after the COVID made people realize that you know what i could save a hell of money if i do restructure and this restructure might be office-based employees to make it remote because whether you like it or not, they save uh, like the utilities, uh, bills, <laughs> uh, all these type of uh, costs. But at the same time, some roles might be merged or combined because usually when you set a structure or a route to market, 
in FMCG specifically, you put it on the best model, okay? So you put it like full fledged to reach a specific uh, target or numbers or aspirations. But if it doesn't work because things don't go smooth, especially in this part of the world, in the Middle East, Africa, Asia region, where it's a VUCA environment, every day, every month, you find something that is unplanned that happened. For companies, at the end of the day, it's not an NGO. Companies manage P&Ls. So if revenues don't come, you need to cut costs to generate the profit at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Profit goes to a family owner, uh, a business owner, shareholders, uh, a stock market, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, we're here to do business, to do profits. Mm -hmm. So the best scenario is invest in people, hire people, grow the business. If it works, hallelujah, great. If it doesn't work, then you need to do some tweaks. We found in the last couple of years, restructures and companies and big names huh? doing it every two years mm -hmm. which is so much okay but again as an employee just think from the business perspective the company's perspective if this is your money would you do that definitely your answer would be yes if you have a diluting pnl a negative pnl will you continue this business even if this business has 100 people thousand people 100,000 people. Again, if it's your money, you might try one year, two years, five years, 10 years. But if it's not adjusting itself, if it's not improving and developing, you will close the business, right? Or at least, in other words, do a restructure. The other point of view from the employee's part. And what I want to ask everyone, including myself, because I faced several restructures in my life. Some of them, by the way, I survived. Some of, the, some of them, I didn't survive. Some of them, I was in the position that I asked people to leave. Some of them, I was asked to continue or leave or change a role. And this role might have been something good for me, matching with my aspiration. And sometimes, no, like you said, eat bread, like for, uh, in Arabic, <laughs> like, okay, you just want to sustain your income. So, okay, I'll, I'll agree for, for now till, till further notice. Mm -hmm. But for employees, you need to embrace change. Mm -hmm. So change is the only constant in life now. You need to, you're, you need to refer to the first question you, you talked about and I answered, which is agility. You need to be agile. You need to be flexible. You need to adjust your mindset to get out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Definitely, as a person, as a human being, you, your comfort zone is to continue whatever you're doing, the way you're doing, every day. But if I come and tell you, you know what? Every day you go through this route, this street to go to work, this is blocked, you go to the other way, you will feel uncomfort. Although this example is very simple, but I mean, even in business is the same. You're doing this job, tomorrow you'll be doing another job with a different line manager, with different people, with different customers, or even different functions sometimes. So keep change in mind, be agile, be flexible, and you can develop yourself on that, by the way. So we referred previously to uh, change management courses uh, online, it's for free now, some companies help you. And the last message I want to give is for both companies and employees, okay? Let's work it together. That's my humble advice. The best way to pass through a restructure is you as a company, consider me as an employee. I'm an, an employee, consider you as a business. Let's work jointly. Let's work mutually. So don't come and tell me, I will do an adjustment or in other words, if I, without sugarcoating, if I will fire you, okay? It's not today. I have some commitments, right? Mm -hmm. So give me some time, give me a good financial package, okay? Which is a mutual agreement, financial. Some companies I saw, very good examples of, uh, since we are expats, out of our own country. Some people say, you know what? I will leave your visa on us, even when you leave the company, for another three or six months or one year or till, till you land somewhere safe. Some other companies say, oh, you know what? I will pay you the schooling of your kids for this year, just not to bother about it and to focus on searching for a new job. So let's be mutual. The same for the 
employees don't there is an arabic saying like uh, if i give you my finger you'll eat my arm <laughs> so uh, so so don't be greedy again it needs to be mutual we will reach a middle ground but don't ask for like 100 things with the mindset okay if i land with 10 this is good we need to reach something so don't be a greedy don't make it hard for me to uh, to separate uh, yeah i think this is uh, but it will remain to be a hot topic people are uh, always against change people will not always be comfortable with that but the more you pass through the more you get comfortable too i think it uh, it will pass mustafa what do you value the most in your life and in your from business perspective relationships in simple word so uh, your main asset in life is your network so the more you build relationships the more you build proper healthy positive relationships this will definitely help you in your personal life and your business life how many times you were struggling in a challenge and you just raise your phone pick your phone and call someone for help or support how many times you leave a company okay and uh, you've heard that they talk about you while you're absent very positive mm -hmm. this is what we call legacy mm -hmm. so uh, to leave a footprint or a legacy you need to build good re good relationships and build your network by the way building network is again i will always refer being a corporate uh, expert for the last 22 years is one of the key skills and competencies that people in organization look for mm -hmm. and companies usually want to invest in you to build your network so this is why for example companies do workshops face to face cross functional or cross country like regional workshops what's the main reason for that it's networking definitely the content of the workshop is something crucial to cascade a strategy or a plan or follow up on uh, on business uh, uh, discussions but networking is crucial learning from each other uh, when you talk with someone from a different country different background different age different gender whatever it is so again to summarize the most valuable thing in life is building healthy relationships so if i ask you that one of the major acceleration for your career is it inside multiple of companies was it your relationship management yes 100%. I can tell you one thing. One of the companies, without mentioning names, I started my career in and I stayed for a couple of years. And then I moved throughout my career, different countries, different regions, different continents, different companies, even different functions. And then after 15 years, I went back to the same company, which is something I'm really proud of. Why this would have happened? If you don't have the relationship, if you don't leave a legacy if your reputation is not uh, good that's the main reason so definitely it helps a lot building relationship is one of the key skills and believe it or not it's not the right example but some people through their network and relationships overcome their performance or capability and they grow faster in businesses to that extent so no, it's crucial, it's crucial. What is that one thing that you are very proud of? My purpose. What's your purpose? My purpose in life, which I defined, I think seven, eight years ago, is to make a difference in people's life every day. So what I'm really proud of is this purpose. Comes with it definitely the way I was raised, my values, my ethics, all these combined could be summarized in the purpose. Uh, the other thing I'm really proud of, and everyone needs to be proud of, is your journey, the journey itself. 
whatever you do wherever you are whatever the number of experience of years you have the journey itself is something that you need to be proud of all the bumpy roads that you went uh, through all the successes all the failures all the learnings all the experiences all the people that you've met good or bad all the companies that you've worked through worked in all your roles that you've done if you are an entrepreneur and you open the business and it failed or it succeeded that's that's the journey you need to enjoy the journey and you need to be proud of your journey because everything happens for a reason don't think that uh, i'm a successful person or i'm not this person i look forward to or i aspire to be the same like this person you have your own legacy you have your own journey doesn't mean that you don't have like a role model to run behind and, uh, and be like him or her it doesn't mean that but i mean you also need to be proud of your journey what is the hardest situation that you have in life and how did you overcome it i won't talk business in this mm. part okay feel free so uh, if i could tweak the answer towards what is the one main challenge that i face throughout my life 43 years of living or 22 years of career it would be the famous word of work-life balance i've always and i'm not saying that's right it's wrong and i learned it the hard way focusing more on work on business on the cost of my personal life personal well-being personal mental health personal quality time that I spend with my family and kids and friends is the biggest challenge that everyone whether works in corporate or an entrepreneur will face and needs to work on to improve the one thing not one actually a couple of things so when I reflect on my personal life now I don't say I regret but uh, my father passed away a couple of years ago and I was living abroad okay. I was not with him I, I felt that I didn't spend the right time the proper time with him now I missed him it impacted the quality time I spent with my kids now I have two kids one of them is going to university in a couple of months but uh, when I reflect back, I don't think I spent the quality time with them when they were very young. I also don't remember spending a lot of time with the families and friends because, and it impacted my, uh, my marriage, it impacted my person. So in a lot of angles, so being passionate about work, loving work is something very good. But being workaholic is dangerous. And you don't realize it except when you miss some things. If you reflect back on that journey, or if you come back to that, what is that thing that you would change? And if you change it, would you think that you would be successful like today? Um, one thing that I could change yeah I think uh, going back to the point that we were just talking about you know the word self-awareness self-discovery this is a key word that I think every one of us including myself needs to reflect on and if i didn't change this self-awareness thing on the go and this is an advice to everyone you will be left behind and you will be victimizing yourself how many times in your life you've met people that you ask them 
how do you feel? How do you see yourself in the business? And then they tell you, you know what? I'm doing the best. I'm the best uh, person in the company, but uh, people don't perceive that. Or how many people you talked with, they feel victimized or they have a perception about themselves, which is totally different than how people perceive them or how the company sees them. That's self-awareness. So self-awareness is something that needs to be changed on the go. And it all starts from self-awareness or self-discovery. Regardless of your level, regardless of your nationality, regardless of your company, if you don't know yourself well and work based on that, what needs to get developed, what am I strong at? What am I weak at? What are my areas of development? What are the key points that I need to work on? And they need somehow to match with the reality. Life is unfair. Life is always unfair. But again, it depends on how do you absorb this reality. Okay, if I say life is unfair and I just stay still, I'm victimized in myself, I just cry, I just stay alone thinking, yeah, those people are not fair to me. What's next? You're going to the depression. So self-awareness is something that I encourage everyone, including myself, to refresh. It's an ongoing process, ongoing thing. I might be self-aware when I was young, a fresh grad, that I'm fresh grad. But some people, after working for five years, 10 years, they think that they are gurus already. They've learned it all. This is totally wrong. Mm -hmm. I see some people, some of my mentors and role models, they have like 30, 40 years of experience. They still tell me that they've learned today this, they got developed in that. They even learned from people like are lower in, uh, in their experience every day. This is something that you really aspire and look uh, forward to. But some people, they don't self-realize themselves. Uh, I, I saw a lot of people like that. And you know, without being uh, uh, offensive, so uh, I'm an entrepreneur at the same time, but I, I saw a lot of people in, nowadays you see a lot of startups, you, lot of, you see a lot of people uh, uh, founding, finding business, like the, I'm a co-founder of this, I'm the CEO of this business. Fine, that's good. I'm really happy for you. But if you feel that with five years of experience, you're the CEO and you're comparing your capabilities with the CEO that reached there in 20 years or 30 years, you're wrong. You're mistaken, man. You're mistaken. So self-awareness is uh, key for that. Do you regret things? Usually I don't regret because everything happens for a reason. So, no, I don't regret anything. You, you, you learn from your mistakes. Mm. You develop yourself. But no, never regret. Because everything happens from God. Okay, it's written, right? So you pray regardless of your religion or your faith. You pray for whatever you want. You work, you do your best. Okay, but then everything happens for a reason. So maybe the reason we don't understand, we don't know what will happen after, what's the consequence, but you bear the consequence of any decision you take. That's a simple answer. So don't regret it. You did something, this is the consequence, whether good or bad, you might think it's bad. Leaving a job might be the end of the world for someone, right? But no, it's a new era for this person. So uh, a lot of examples you can uh, you can uh, you can refer to in such things. I believe that when people are inside the situation itself, it's totally different when you are outside the situation, right? So how do you handle such hard situation? I would say we don't see the future, right? And as you, as you rightly said that in in even our religion that if you have the choice to choose the best for you, you would choose the same 
past that you have it today, right? Because this is what I know. Yeah, because even we, we don't, I'm, I'm sure that most of us, we have like this thinking. We don't know what's happening. But so, inside the situation itself, it's hard to judge it. How do you manage yourself in such a situation? Because life is cyclic. It will never be like straight line. How do you manage yourself in the downs, downs time? What I personally do is I uh, do two things. I have my me time and me time could be having a coffee in the open air, just thinking and reflecting or even just shutting down my mind, just looking around. This could be one of the things I do. The other thing I do is I play sports. It, it really energizes me. It brings me back on track. Those are two things I personally do when I'm down. Doesn't mean that like uh, I'm a very uh, uh, self-controlled person. I I don't face these type of days. No, definitely. I some sometimes you go home. You just uh, sit on the sofa and uh, cry. You just feel that why is this happening? It's normal. Your flesh and blood, right? So it's normal. You have feelings, you have emotions. So it's fine. But what's not fine is not going out of this mood. This is what differentiates one person from another. This is what defines how strong, how solid, how mature you are. And by experience, this maturity level, it's not a simple word. When you say someone is mature, huh? It's not like, yeah, I'm mature. It's not like that. Maturity actually is when you're put in a situation where you feel inside you need to reply or take an action and you don't. That's maturity. And when you reach this point, you will start to overcome a lot of situations with people, with work, with your family, with your own self. I think that's that's the key thing here. Yeah. It's amazing. So what could be the best advice that you can give it to employees or someone that has a challenge in life or in their career and they feel that they are just reached to a close corner and they want to raise the white flag on themselves? What's your best advice to give them? Uh, the first thing is, again, it's something that I've heard. When you are in dark, you feel that you're buried, right? But actually you're seeded or planted. That's the first advice. Understand it the way you, you get it. It's a very deep statement, but if you dig deep into it, it will summarize it all. The other thing is, if you need to change your life, you need to change something, right? So if you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. Very simple. Mm -hmm. So those are the two advices I would, uh, I would give to anyone in his personal or career life. Thank you so much, Mustafa, for coming here today. It's amazing values. Really, I appreciate you, and uh, I'm just wishing you all the best in your amazing career. Keep inspiring, keep impacting more people in your life. Unleash is the bridge between my purpose and my mission. And my mission is unleashing the human greatness to its utmost potential.